Today I will show you how to implement simple pathfinding, sensory systems and provide a brief overview of behavior trees and finite state machines. Go to Window, AI, Navigation. A tab should open up next to the inspector. This is built-in Unity navigation system. It helps the computer solve two problems. How to reason about the level to find the destination and then how to move them. We must give it data to represent the walkable areas in the game. This surface is called the navigation mesh. So let's hit bake. Nothing happens. That is because we haven't set which objects are part of the terrain. By default game objects are dynamic, which means they move at runtime and aren't included in any pre-computations for any systems. You can include them by marking them as static. You should only include a game object in the pre-computations for systems that need to know about it in order not to waste memory. But don't trust me, this video can turn into a dropshipping tutorial at any moment. Today we will only navigation static, so select it, you can also do it from navigation object tab. And now let's hit bake. Voila! The only thing left to do is connect it to our enemy. New script, import Unity Engine AI, NavMesh Agent, Player Transform, and we just set the destination to object's position. Look, we didn't have to do anything, it's all done by Unity. Now we can tweak things like speed, acceleration and radius in NavMesh Agent. Today I'll limit myself to only checking if the player is close enough and if he is in the direct line of sight. Range is simple, just use vector distance between player and the enemy and then move towards the player. And for the line of sight, I will be using Raycaster. I go deeper into it because I believe it is one of the most important functions in Unity. But if you already know everything about it, skip to the video here. Alright, so Raycast is like shooting a laser beam in a direction you choose. And it's super useful for figuring out whatever the right bumps into. So let's construct it. Physics, Raycast and now overloads. The origin, the direction, how to get the direction from point A to point B, just subtract the vectors. You usually normalize these vectors, but it's cool, you can skip this part here. Now, let's talk raycasting basics. When you use a raycast, it just tells you yes or no if it hits something. But if you are curious what exactly you hit, you gotta use a raycast hit variable. Pop that as the third argument in a raycast function with the word out in front of it. This little trick gets you the nitty gritty details like the collider, where it hit, how far it was and more. You can leave the other stuff blank if you don't need it. I hope it helped. So we raycast from the agent to the player. And if we hit something, and that thing was the player, start moving. I saved the last positions he had seen him for later. You can also limit the agent to think only what is in front of it by using the vector angle function. I'll take the direction that the agent faces and the direction of the raycaster and limit it to 90 degrees. And now if the enemy loses sight of the player he would go to the last place he had seen him and stop. But then what? Do you remember that smart sounding thing from the intro? These terms were just invented by people to sound smart in tech interviews. A final state machine is just a computer doing something with a limited number of states and switching between them under some conditions. So what can my cylinder do after he loses track of the player? I believe he would be confused at first and look around, and then he would resume some sort of passive action, like patrolling. Let's implement it. I want detecting the player to take priority over everything else, so I elevate it into a separate bow method and only do the other stuff after we already know he can see the player. Also, when he sees the player and follows him, let's set his state to actively chasing. To do so, let's create a new enum called enemy state and a reference to it. I use it to easily check what the enemy should do now. Cool. Now, if he loses track of the player, so check for target is false, and if his state is still actively chasing, go to search mode. I split it into two phases. In the first, just go to the last known location. Here I utilize the cached position. And then, to simulate looking around, I create a core routine. Core routine allows you to spread tasks across several frames. So three times, set the destination to some point near the player and wait five seconds. If you want to know more about getting a random point near the player, check out my video about randoms in Unity. Fine. After he finishes, let's set his state to passive and find something to do. I've just created an array of transforms and each time he reaches one of them, he goes to the new one. Here I also implemented some delay, 
but you can easily just change it to normal method and find new waypoint without stopping. So what you want to do is get your mom's credit card and buy my course for $600.